All right, in the last video, we talked about the four different kinds of process strategies and how an organization will try to create an operational process strategy that aligns with the company's competitive advantages and the type of products that they want to have to support their customers. But I also talked about that it's not a one size fits all sometimes in those process strategies between a, a process focus, a repetitive focus, and a product focus. Sometimes you might mix and match a little bit between whatever type of product you're trying to manufacture. Some might be higher volume and um, with less variety, and then some might be lower volume with a, a high amount of variety. So the crossover analysis is an approach to choosing among alternative uh, processes or equipment and which one an organization might want to um, pursue. So let me give you a real quick example of what this looks like in my life. I do analysis like this all the time with our hospital laboratory clients. When you go into a laboratory, there is capital equipment in that laboratory that tests patients' blood samples. So you might have chemistry analyzers in one area of the lab. You might have microbiology analyzers in another part of the lab, hematology, anatomic pathology, you know, go down the list. There's lots of different lab categories. And with each one of those specialties, they have equipment that they need to process the blood samples. Well, a lab, depending on how big it is, a lab can have hundreds of employees who are working in it, trying to process samples for all the people in that hospital. And so not all hospitals are the same size. They don't have the same volumes. They don't have the same patient mix. So one piece of equipment that works for one hospital might not make sense at another hospital. So the manufacturers have different kinds of equipment with more um, testing mix and higher capacity, faster throughput, and lots of different options for hospital laboratories as well. So my point in all of this is that when I go into a smaller hospital, they don't need an analyzer that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, that, can, that can process a high throughput of uh, tests. They might be okay with a smaller analyzer that's okay with lower volume because they don't have as much volume. So therefore, what, what one hospital needs, maybe they need the really expensive high throughput analyzer versus a smaller hospital that would use a smaller analyzer, but maybe it takes a little bit more manual labor uh, to, uh, to perform those tests. So there's always this trade-off. So when I go into these hospitals, uh, depending on whether they're big or small, you know, these people are um, the, the, um, the specialists who work in these laboratories. When they want a piece of equipment, it's not their money. The hospital's buying the equipment to support them. So generally they want the latest and greatest technology. That's the highest throughput, has the most perks. And sometimes we have to work with them to let them know um, that that might not be the best option for them based off of the volumes that they have. And so we are essentially doing an analysis to say, okay, if you get a higher throughput analyzer, you don't need as many people processing samples because the equipment will do it for you. So maybe you need to let go of a few, a few of your specialists. On the opposite side of that, you know, maybe we determine that a small analyzer works fine for them, but unfortunately they're going to have more people and more labor uh, dollars, which is variable dollars, because that piece of equipment is perfectly fine for their lab. So that was a long explanation of how I use crossover analysis on a daily basis between trying to decide what kind of equipment uh, is needed to support that laboratory. And there is always a trade-off because if I get them the nicer equipment, they don't need, they don't need as many people. If we get them the worse, not worse, just the lower capacity equipment, they might need to have more people in their laboratory processing those samples because maybe there's more manual steps. So let's go into crossover analysis and let's uh, briefly go over what some of these abbreviations mean. So your VC of A is your variable cost per unit. Um, that's your option A. Your fixed cost is your FC of A. That is your fixed cost for option A. VC of B, that's your variable cost for option B, and your FC of B is your fixed cost for option B. Your VC of C is your variable cost for option C, and your FC of C is your fixed cost for option C. So to try and find where our crossover point is, we're gonna use this formula at the bottom. 
and pay close attention to it because you can see the formulas are not the same. And for this example, where there's three different options to pick from, there's options A, B, and C, you need to do the crossover point for A and B, and then you need to do the crossover point for B and C. Okay, so if there's only two options, uh, then you can do just one of the formulas, but if there's three options, then you do it twice for every different crossover point that there can be. Q is your quantity produced, uh, and your crossover quantity is the Q with the asterisk. So for this very first formula, you can see you've got your quantity for A minus B, and or sorry, where A crosses over B, and that's your fixed cost of B minus your fixed cost of A. Down at the bottom, your A and your B are switched. So you've got your variable cost of A minus your variable cost of B. That will make sense when I show you the next slide. Then you've got your crossover point for B and C. You've got your fixed cost for C minus your fixed cost for B over your variable cost for B minus your variable cost for C. So again, you can see that B and C uh, are, are switched on the bottom for your variable costs. And um, same thing over on this formula, your A and B and your B and A are also flip-flopped. So be, uh, be very careful with this formula when you're writing it down when you have three different options. Okay, so let's do an example together. We're going to evaluate three different accounting software products. We're going to calculate the crossover points between software A and B and then between B and C. For this example, your software package A has a total fixed cost or an upfront cost of $200,000, and then your variable cost per unit is $60. For software B, it's $100,000 more, but it must have some nice little perks to where you don't need as uh, many people um, or as many processes if you have software um, package number B, so your variable costs go down. Then with software package number C, or letter C, your fixed costs are higher. You've got 400000 in fixed costs, but your variable costs go down. So think about if this, um, if I would have said what software packages A, B, and C are, think of software package being uh, A being an MRP system. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, so maybe your buyers have to create purchase orders and your planners have to create work orders and you have to call your supplier or fax them every time there's an order. Um, you have to, your accountants have to do manual invoicing. Your salespeople have to um, call a customer and say, hey, your, your product delivery has been moved out or we've been able to expedite it or whatever it may be. So your variable costs, your people costs are higher because you bought just an, a basic MRP system. Software package C could be an ERP system. So it's going to cost you more up front, but then invoicing between the supplier and yourself could be, could be automated. Um, your customers could be notified whenever there's a change order. Your vendors could be uh, connected to your forecast, and so they know exactly what products they need to uh, manufacture on your behalf, and you've got purchase orders that are automatically sent to them. So your people costs or your variable costs are lower. So that would be an example of how when you pay for nicer equipment or software packages while your variable costs would then decrease because people aren't going to be touching it as much um, or the other perks make it more efficient. So let's do this example together. Our first formula is the crossover point for A and B. You're going to take $300,000 minus $200,000 over your variable costs of $60 minus $25. So you can see your fixed cost of B, which is $300,000, minus your fixed cost of A, which is $200,000, over your variable costs. So for A, it's $60, and for B, it's $25. Therefore, it's $100,000 or $100,000, yeah, $100,000 divided by 35 gives you a crossover point between A and B of 2,857. Now let's do the crossover point for B and C. So for B and C, it's, it's a different formula, and you're going to have different inputs. So now you're going to take $400,000, because that is your fixed cost for product C, minus $300,000 for your fixed cost of uh, software package B. Then on the bottom, you've got your variable costs. So your variable cost for B is $25, minus your variable cost of C, which is $10. 
So you've got $100,000 divided by 15 gives you a crossover point of 6,666. Um, and so now you've, you've calculated your two crossover points. They're 2,857 and 6,666 units. Um, so this doesn't tell us much yet, but think about it conceptually, that if you're trying to determine which uh, product to buy, that you need to know what your output is going to be. So for my hospital laboratories, I know what their patient volumes are. I know what volume they need to be able to process. So if these are my crossover points, if they've got low volume, then maybe that leads me to believe, okay, we're gonna go with uh, product A versus product C because they aren't meeting that volume threshold. So for this example, okay, let's start off with um, our fixed cost for A. So you can see in this example, it's $200,000 for your fixed cost for A, but your variable costs were higher. So your variable costs are gonna go up faster with uh, product A. So you're paying less up front, but your variable costs go up faster because you're paying $60 uh, per, uh, per unit. Next, you've got your fixed cost for B. It's $100,000 more, but your variable costs are lower. Okay, so your variable costs are lower for B, your fixed costs are higher, and you can see it, those cross over, that's why it's called a crossover point analysis, they cross over at 2,857 units. And then for the fixed cost of C, it has a higher cost up front, $400,000, and it crosses over process B at 6,666 units. So here's what this tells us. If your process is going to yield less than 2,857 units, you buy software package number A. If your process is going to yield somewhere between 2,858 and 6,665, then you would pick software package number B. And if you believe that your output is going to be over 6,666, then you would pick software package C. And that's what the crossover point tells us, the crossover point analysis. And so for the question at the bottom, if we need to purchase 5,000 units, which one's the best choice for us? That would be software package B. Now on the practice problems, hopefully you guys uh, are doing practice problems as you prepare for your exam. There is one in there and it's a question regarding make versus buy. Uh, well, in that example, when you've got your higher fixed costs and your lower variable costs, that would be the product that you're going to make. You're making it. So you've got those high upfront costs to buy the equipment, but your variable costs are lower. Your buy option is when you've got the lower fixed costs because you're not gonna be buying equipment, but you're gonna be purchasing from a supplier. So you've got a higher variable cost. So that would be an example of a buy. So just keep that in mind when you're looking through the different examples um, that um, you can have, uh, you're gonna have that inverse relationship between uh, a lower fixed cost will have higher variable costs and then a higher fixed cost will have lower variable costs. And if they don't, then that is not a package you wanna pursue. You should never buy something with a higher fixed cost and a higher variable cost. If you're gonna spend more money for equipment up front, your variable costs better go down or it's not worth your money. So you'll never ever get a negative answer doing a crossover point analysis because then that would mean that that piece of equipment is definitely not worth the money. Okay, and that wraps it up for a crossover analysis.